And finally, last but not least, we've got... The Alavas Oracle! Oh my god! Well, well, I just, I have to, I have to read this one, don't I? Spooky puppet show excites city. Tricadian playwright Eduardo Bosconi has put the city abuzz with performances of his latest masterwork, a a uh, work of suspense and horror based on common stories from his homeland, Pigeon Loft. Hair to the Throne. Uh, follows a quintet of tragic heroes, each with their own inner demons as they struggle to escape an undead vampire who is actually really dead, but apparently not dead. The spine-tingling tale is made all the more impactful through his expert use of elaborate creations of felt and cloth, that aren't quite puppets, but also not quite marionettes. I wanted to call them Muppets, because they were monster puppets, said Bosconi. But I received word from the Livrosian clergy that the word has already been used in reference to the creations of their Saint Henson. <laughs> and out of respect for him, I felt it was best to avoid confusion. While some may think the use of these marionette puppet hybrids would make the media more child-friendly, we implore our readers to think again, as the show contains no shortage of blood and gore, also constructed from textiles, including many deaths, decapitations, dismemberments, and other forms of violence. The performers of Bosconi's masterpiece were locals of Alabas, with one exception, in Haka Bainma, who came in from the Tatalon jungle to take part in the show. I was thrilled to participate, Bane Ma sta stated. It's always been a dream of mine to become a puppeteer, and I was discouraged because my pa my particular heritage of lizard folk has tiny, tiny arms. People were always saying things like, how are you going to do, how are you going to operate a puppet with such tiny arms? I'd ignore those critics at least after I bit their heads off. The first showing of the show was a surprise hit and garnered a host of positive reviews. Many stated it was exciting to see such daring representation of Tricadian history. Not everyone was positive. One local druid took offense to the names in the show, insisting that the pigeons are not bringers of doom but destru and destruction. Though his statements were tem tempered by immensely muscular man-sized pigeon nearby, cracking walnuts with his bare hands to eat their contents. If you are needing a thrill, I encourage you to check out Pigeon Loft, Hair to the Throne. Incredible. Also, we have the Yaranaika Clouds. Mostly sunny. AM Dragon Assault, 56 out of 34 chance of dragon. 56 34th chance of dragon. Wait. There's almost double the chance of dragon attacks? Damn. That's crazy, Batman. Play an interesting game of cat and mouse at the ranch. If you're a feline frisky, you can find the perfect match for your needs from our diver's staff. Okay, hang on. New sponsor disclaimer. Readers, 
We at the Alvast Oracle, in line with our pursuit of truth and transparency, have seen the need to announce that the paper has entered a new sponsorship with Die Hard Mice. Much celebrated for their breed of robust rodents, Die Hard Mice promise to be more resilient than even their owners, proving to shrug off traps, falls, poison, even the deadly dwarven throwing beer stein. Die Hard Mice are the premier pet for forgetful adventurers who keep bringing their animals into ruins and dungeons. The Oracle pledges that no matter how lucrative this partnership with the esteemed Die Hard Mice may be, it will not affect our reporting on other potentially inferior pet suppliers. Saren Rasmer, head writer. Well, let's not waste any time and get to da 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 the letters to the Lady of Livrosia. Dear Lady of Livrosia, I love you. I'm a paladin of Livrosia, and I all and my work, Morty has been aiding with the rescue and protection of domestic abuse victims alongside our cousins serving Avon. Between my oaths and the nature of our faith, I find it harder and harder not to grow too attached to the people I help, especially when there are children involved. And some of the things I have seen during the, com the commencement of my duties has weighed more and more heavily on my own heart. I know I should take time to care for myself, but I fear that even one day off could be the day I am needed the most. How can I not see self-care as selfishness at the cost of others? Signed, Armored Heart. Dear Armored Heart, I love you. When you are working hard to serve those who you are truly in, are in need, it is often a great burden on your own heart. I am keenly aware that there is a world of people who all deserve to be loved, and it pains me greatly to know that I can't help them at all. I can't help them all as much as I want to. Part of serving others is knowing your limits. Any farmer knows that you can't work a horse if it has an injured leg. Sometimes it just needs a bit of time to recoup. The same with our hearts and minds. It can also start showing wear and tear and the need time to rest. Speak with the clergy of Illinae for they are experts in helping provide clarity of mind and knowing your own self. Then you may know when you are fit to return to serving in love. Dear Lady of Livrosia, I've been spending a lot of time with this guy that I met through work. I'm still getting to know him and I think I'd like to get to know him more. I'm struggling with how some of my co-workers reacted to the news when I shared that I was dating him. He's an orc and I'm a human and I was a bit stunned by how shocked people were when I said that we were dating. I wasn't so sure myself, and to hear others seemingly in doubt of the situation, or at least surprised, made me wonder if my own feelings were valid or not. This is all very new to me, and to be realistic, there are differences between us that may be difficult to bridge. How should I handle these conflicting messages? Signed, Dating Maybe? Dear Dating Maybe, I love you. When we are figuring out our own hearts, it can be confusing enough, and to have others react the way they did can muddy things even further. There's two things that could be happening. First, your co-worker... Your co-workers may not approve of the situation. While Alavast is diverse, some people still hold old prejudices. Second, it may not have been outwardly prejudiced, but more how they view you. They may, may even be pleasantly surprised that you are brave enough to pursue this journey of the heart, despite the potential pitfalls. I bet the situation may have challenged how they saw you, and not necessarily in a bad way. Often, when we are learning who we are, we can grow in ways that people around us don't expect, and those amazed comments may become cheers for your success. Is that Gibby? Look, it's not because he's an orc. It's because he's a criminal. 
You can date an orc. Fine. I don't care. But he kidnapped my daughter! Hey lady, I've been in Alavast for not quite a year now, and ever since my father said I had to come here as part of a treaty agreement, I suppose he also wants me to learn something, though I'm not sure what I can learn from these short-lived humans and their trite little ways and lives. As much as I hate to admit it, I can't help but notice two things. Humans are super annoying, but human girls are pretty neat. I don't know what it is exactly, but they are simultaneously infuriating and fascinating. Not quite sure what to call this feeling, but I mean, I want to spend time around them, but I don't want to seem like I enjoy it. They are a lesser race after all. Signed, Scaled and Confused. Dear Scaled and Confused, I love you. It sounds like you're coming very close to an epiphany. That is a human term for a realization that affects your whole worldview. I suggest sending some, spending some time in reflection in the manner of Orthoc. Us human types may not be long-lived as, say, dragons or many elves, but that doesn't mean we can't be any less fascinating. The rose is beautiful to behold in experience and, and fades in a few weeks. Think about why you consider human women so fascinating. Try to find some other humans that feel who, that feel who you can talk uh, that feel who you can talk to about this, and find some common ground. I'm willing to bet that you already know the answer of the why. Don't be shy. Talk to her. And with that, I think we'll bring this uh, episode of the Alabast Art Gallery to a close. Thank you all so much for stopping by. This has been the Alavast Oracle and also the Alavast Art Gallery.